Hey, what is up guys? It's Uniter back again with another video and finally I'm posting another Walking Dead video on my channel. It's been like eight months since I last posted a video. So I hope you guys are doing good. I appreciate you coming back to my channel and watching this and uh, just supporting my channel in general. It really does mean a lot. Um, but anyways, they made a stream for The Walking Dead Season 4, the final, the final season of the series, which is going to be pretty crazy, probably sad, um, but it's been a long road. I remember I played Season 1 back in, when was it, 2012 when it came out? I don't remember, but I played it right as it came out, and now I'm 17, believe it or not. I'm 17, I played the game when I was like 13. I really don't know when it came out, but it's been a long run. Um, I've been a fan of The Walking Dead as a whole for a while. But anyways, they made a stream, they showed some new characters, they showed some concept art for The Walking Dead Season 4, which is pretty crazy. Let me know what you guys think of the characters, let me know if you guys think of the concept art, all that. Um, they didn't post a trailer, but they did put uh, the trailer for the people that were at the event, and maybe they'll post it on their channel in a couple of hours. Who knows, but I'll make a trailer breakdown on that if they do, um, so we'll see what happens. It's pretty disappointing that they didn't just show it to everyone. But I kind of get it because people paid for the event to like see exclusive stuff and all that. But so we still got a lot more time before it drops. Um, hopefully it's good. I know a lot of people didn't really like season three. Um, it was all right in my opinion. There was a couple good scenes. There was a couple good episodes and stuff like that. But hopefully this one is good. But anyways, enough talking, enough introduction, enough me talking. Let's get right into the highlights, baby. Let's go. Looking at here, Dave. So. Uh, at the timeline that we're in um, here, things are very dilapidated. Um, people, some people might be making an effort to keep things up, but certainly not at this boarding school uh, where part of our story takes place. Um, and things are just going to crap and nature's taking over. Uh, there's a lot of kids that live here and there's not a window pane intact. I think <laughs> kids like breaking windows and, and, and we're making sure to deliver on that. Jess, is this where all these kids you're talking about come in? Yeah. Where are we? What, what, it's a boarding school? It's a boarding school. We haven't really, we haven't said where it is. Um, but yeah, we start episode one in this boarding school. And we get to meet a lot of kids that are about um, Clementine's age. We do have art of those kids at some point. In this, I don't know where they are. So <laughs> skip some around, point. bring the kids. <laughs> Just skip forward. No. But, like, let, don't do it like for a uh, second. <laughs> skip forward. <laughs> Are we still, where are we here now? Oh, we're still in the boarding no, school? We're still in the boarding school. This is the headmaster's office. Okay. Bogan? You, you, yep. yep. More of the same. <laughs> Not a window intact. Um, these kids have gone through everything. They've used books for kindling, you know, breaking furniture mm -hmm. to keep the, the fire warm so they can cook their food. Yeah. Um, it's just a mess. My favorite is actually, and I didn't notice it until I was looking at the deck before we came here, is the like rock t-shirt that's just hanging on the wall. Yeah, yeah like a poster. <laughs> yeah. So is this what you're talking about, Dave, in terms of the color and the saturation and like trying to make it more grounded slash gritty? Well, what originally when we started season one, we were um, very enamored with kind of like the color processed look and um, desaturate tone of things. I think it really just matches the mood of the storytelling and, and the license itself. So, um, yeah, we're, I think season three in places got a little too colorful for my liking. Mm, um, okay. It was, it was, we took a chance, it was different. You know, there was parts where there was like generators and electricity and we're just really going back now. Like that stuff's running out. No one has that anymore. Um, and tonally it's, it's still as bleak as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, speaking of the tone and what a Walking Dead world looks like, what is Skybound's involvement with Telltale nowadays, right? It's the fourth season now, and not including 300 days, and like Michonne, like, you guys have worked for a long time. Is there check-ins? Does Robert mm -hmm. Kirkman walk around? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, like, yeah, Robert around. just kind of like walks around and looks over our shoulders on a regular basis. No, we actually, I think the one thing that, um, you know, that goes unsaid a lot of times is our editorial team, um, the people who actually make the Walking Dead comic. It's not just a comic, but it's a comic. Um, and, uh, you know, that's led by a guy named Sean Makowitz, who is the uh, editor-in-chief. And so he really is kind of Robert's eyes and ears of the, of, of the world because he lives it and breathes it every day just like Robert does um, as they make the comic book every month. And so 
Uh, he spends a lot of time. We basically we work hand in hand when it comes to a lot on the story side, just looking at the scripts and making sure that the editorial staff is really not just like, okay, that's good. It's literally trying to provide notes like they would to any of our comic book writers. And that's our process. It's a little different, I would say, than other sure. license holders. Jess, is there then more pressure than just... I think your mic's off. Do I need it? I'm very loud. He <laughs> is. Jess, is there then more pressure of you know that Skybound's looking at this on top of your peers, on top of thousands and millions of players? No pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> None whatsoever. Makowitz uh, is a very imposing figure. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually uh, really nice. Yeah, it's, it's a massive pressure. I remember I was asked to come on to Walking Dead, and I was like, are, are you sure? <laughs> I just, I'm like, you know this is like our flagship project, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, you can do it. I'm like, ah. Uh. So but that's also my normal state, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do it. Yeah. It's me every day. <laughs> Let's all look. What's the next? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was going to say, what's the next slide? There's already a new one up there. Yeah. Train station, eh? That's the train station. Yeah. It's more evidence of uh, extreme dilapidation and na uh, nature overgrowing things. Yeah. Evidence of people that have lived there who've been building up walls and with whatever they can find to uh, secure themselves. Now, I look there, and I see Clem in the center of the picture, right? Yeah. And I think about this. When you work with Clem and you're planning what she's going to look like in each one of these games, how hard is it to honor who we know as players, but then also want to do stuff, right? Like, is there, like, obviously keep your hair short, we're never going to forget. That's, okay, that's going to happen, <laughs> checkbox. But, like, she got the new jacket and the new haircut in the, you know, at the end of the last one. Like, was there ever a thought of not having the hat? Like, the hat is such an iconic thing that I, w I always think of her in it, but you look at there. Yeah, like, we fight about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I will I fight think, you as I think well. There's, uh, <laughs> it, there's two camps. I mean, the, the hat is, is a relic and important kind of, uh, you know, Clem's attachment to Lee. Sure. Uh, and, and a lot of people don't want to see that go away. Um, and then there's other people who want to lose the hat as a metaphor for Clem moving on and becoming her own person. Uh, so you'll have to buy the game to find <laughs> out <One guy> <laughs> if the hat's in the game. <laughs> All right, so hold on, quiet. Who wants her to keep the hat? Who wants her to lose the hat? Oh, man. You're wrong. <laughs> like three heartless sons of bitches out there. <laughs> well, yeah. Get rid of it. I'll build the hat. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting stat at the end of an episode. 98% <laughs> said, get rid of the hat. What's our next slide here? What do we have next? Ooh. Oh, wow. Who is, who's Marlon and Rosie? So um, Marlon's one of the kids at the boarding school. Um, He's my favorite. I really like him. And uh, Rosie is his dog. And um, I was allowed to say this as a spoiler. We don't kill the dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> At least not in episode one. I mean. Is that, is, is that an this time, to a Sam? zombie kills the dog. Yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah, that is actually something we have to deal with, with the dog. We keep having to remind ourselves that Clementine is afraid of dogs. And so it's actually really fun to write those scenes um, and kind of negotiate and see how she deals with that but um yeah marlon he's a bit he's got this awesome mullet hawk thing <laughs> yeah. uh and this kick-ass jacket and he's he's really hardened um he's a bit of an abrasive character but he's got like a soft nougaty center and maybe <laughs> you can find that nougaty <laughs> see i refuse to get excited for i refuse to get excited for this character because I remember season two, you showed the dog there. You sh all your key art, dog, here's this girl with a rifle. I'm like, oh, they're going to be main characters. Killed in the first episode. Yeah. Like in the first 10 minutes of the episode. So I don't know how long Marlon and Rosie are going to be around. Still trying to kill that dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Clem's overcome I can't bigger confirm. and tougher foes. Yeah. Episode one, we don't kill a dog. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, um, you, good. Pinky promise? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can it's take official. that <laughs> Now, of course, you're not writing episode two, so who knows? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> From there on out, anything, all bets are off for Rosie. <laughs> Is it hard to introduce new characters? I feel like you know, we all have such an attachment to season one folks, right? And that's why it was so awesome to see uh, Krista in the beginning of season two, to run back into Kenny, to have these moments. Yeah. Is there then, like, you know, how do you introduce somebody that you want us to like, but 
Clem's already got so much history and she's closed off too, which is always difficult. Yeah, it is really difficult, especially uh, my last project uh, that I was lead on was in episode five. So those characters were already written, their tone was kind of figured out and getting thrown onto an episode one and being like, okay, you can come up with these voices now. And I'm like, huh. And I actually, what I started with was I, I made a Google doc of how each of our kids curse because um, <laughs> kids curse in very interesting ways. So like Marlon's the one who's gonna throw F-bombs at every chance he gets. Um, some other kids will refuse to say that. Some will refuse to say you know anything about God or anything like that. So that's kind of where I started. Huh. Um, and then just trying to get into the mindset of kids. I read, I reread a lot of like YA fiction, uh, watched a lot more like uh, shows and movies that had, you know, younger characters. Thrown out of, thrown out of a lot of playgrounds? Yeah. <laughs> They're taking notes. Had a notes. playground That's not oh creepy God, at that all. Oh, sound, God, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> and that was the clean version of the joke I was driving. <laughs> uh, I think the final thing we have is some idle animations. No, oh, we no, we still Lewis. No, well, tell me more about these characters yeah. then. Uh, this is Lewis. He's one of the other kids at the boarding school. Um, uh, Bogan, you had a really good... Well, you Good noticed that Marlon was wearing uh, clothes that would make sense to survive in, uh, things that will kind of like a tough skin that he can roam through the woods and do what he needs to do, uh, whereas Lewis is the character who's trying to preserve the old world. In Fashion over function. Art yeah. <laughs> and culture, everybody. So uh, that's, that explains oh. his look. Yeah. Uh, Violet is, um, I would say she, how would you describe her character? Uh, she's definitely a survivalist. Yeah, she's uh, definitely a lot more pragmatic, a little bit more blunt, like defensive. And, yeah. yeah. If Lewis, you don't kill her right away, a lot of people are going to cosplay her. <laughs> she's. Cool. I hope yeah. so. God, please cosplay these characters. They're yeah. great. Again, don't start your cosplay till you see how long they last. If someone yeah. can make me Marlin's jacket and like send it to Telltale, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, Lewis is a little bit more flirty, and Violet's a little bit more hardened. And then we have Ten, um, who is just—he's he, a sweetheart. He's like. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> that always ends well. Yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. the sweet doe-eyed ones, they always make it. Yeah. Nothing ever happens to Guaranteed. them. <laughs> it's also fun to design their costumes because really, uh, you know, in this world, you want to be wearing things that are going to help you. Um, wearing bright red rubber boots is probably not a good thing to be wearing. Um, well, you have to come up with this entire fiction, right, of how they got all the stuff, and I'm assuming yeah. there's a lot of hand me yeah. down. I just, I just think this kid, you know, he's roughly 10 or 11 years old or something like yeah. that. And so Does he, he change his name every year? <laughs> yeah, he should. Uh, you know, he's been around before this whole situation happened, and he is still at the age in my mind where he might be holding on to something that he likes and over, uh, you know, form over function this time. Ew. And this may look grisly, but uh, in this day and age in The Walking Dead, um, you wouldn't even blink an eye if you saw someone with this, so. Are we gonna find out what happened in the episode? Have to buy it. <laughs> God! <laughs> and then. So yeah. this is the first look at what an idle animation looks like, or what you want, the, the pre-alpha, anything can change, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> this is what you expect it to look right, right? In terms of how the, the environment's moving, how they're moving. Yeah, so higher detail in the modeling, but still retaining a graphic look through the textures and um, uh, the design overall. And the thing that I wanted to talk about here most importantly is each project we try to hang our hat on some kind of artistic device that we're using. And this one, we're really pushing hard for the comic book look. And our, our term that we've coined is basically graphic black. So you look in the background, you can see that all the, the darkest parts of the scene have been clamped into like nice India ink blacks and it feels more like a comic book than I think we've achieved in the past. Very nice. All right. Not yeah. too shabby, right? By the way, this is the first time I'm getting to see any of this too and even though I am Clementine, hashtag I'm Clementine. <laughs> um, I, this is like so exciting for me because I'm also, I actually do play this game so I'm also geeking out at the same time. So I just wanted to tell everybody that. Well, Melissa, yes. we have four minutes of footage we're going to show here in just one yes. second. All right. But at first, uh, we, you know, we, we, we got to you know, say goodbye to the Twitch people again. You should have come to PAX. <laughs> you had your chance to come be in the room. Hi, you don't get it. Hi,
Before we cut off, though, I want to go down the line real quick, though, and be like, what does The Walking Dead, the Telltale game, like, what, what, is, what do these four seasons mean to each of you? I'll start at the end with Dan, right? On, put you right on the spot. Sure. Um, I think I said it in the beginning, which is everything, because it really set the tone for Skybound as a company, um, especially when we think about how we can expand worlds beyond what Robert has created. Um, and this season means so much to us because we love arcs and we love things that sort of have, you know, sort of a... Closure. A, a, not just closure, but sort of an arc structure to it. Obviously, yeah. with our comic books, there's always sort of the, the thing that happens next as you sort of go through each journey that these characters uh, experience in that world. And so bringing Clementine sort of full circle, like you see, is, is really exciting for us because it kind of marries to everything that we try to do. Dave, what is, what is it like right now to be at the final season? What, what does this final season mean to you? Mm -hmm. uh, a journey. Uh, right when we started making the first season, I started. Ha I had my first kid, and I'm on my third now. And traveling through the seasons and watching Clementine grow, there's been a lot of kind of real life injection of, of child development, really. Um, and it's it's it's. I'm kind of attached to it. You know, it's just yeah. a big part of my life. So interesting. Do you worry that the Walking Dead seasons are like Samson's hair, and once it ends, you won't be able to have kids anymore? <laughs> Pretty sure I've taken care of that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what does this final season mean for you? Uh, it, it's bittersweet. I'm going to be sad to see it come to a close. Each, each time we start a new season and I start designing it, uh, I think I know what I'm doing and I realize I don't know what I'm doing halfway <laughs> through it, and I gotta rethink it, and every time it's a challenge, and every time it, it, it brings something new, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss that work working with, uh, with Clementine and The Walking Dead. Jess. Hi. What's it like to finish this out? It's exciting. Yeah. Um, it's a little nerve-wracking, but it's exciting, and I, I mention this a lot at, at work, but um, Clem is really like the shining star of this series. And for me, what's important for this entire season is that it truly becomes a love letter to Clementine because mm. we're bringing her full circle and we're saying goodbye to her for the last time. And if it's not a love letter, then we failed. <laughs> so No it, pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but just making sure that, that Clementine really shines through and her, her voice is really clear. Um, is really important to us, and I just hope everyone likes it. Melissa. Oh, God. The voice. This is, this is where I lose it. I'm not going to, because I rarely wear eye makeup, and I can't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, you know, this journey, uh, the people I've worked with on all sides, uh, it's just, I can't even, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to look at you, because you're going to make me cry. <laughs> um... It's been an amazing experience. <laughs> Sorry. I am. Thank you. There goes the makeup. I'm so honored, and I have so much love for all of you. For all of you. I can cry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you people at home are crying too. <laughs> The or people at home are just they're not going to see the footage, that's all. <laughs> um, I just, this is um, bittersweet, um, obviously a little bit painful, but I'm, I'm so excited, and I couldn't have dreamt to play the most amazing, awesome, kick-ass, phenomenal young woman in a game in this, in this universe ever, so thank you to all of you, and I'm there with you in this last season, know that, I'm there with you. So, I think, I think I speak on behalf of all Telltale fans. Thank you. Thank you all for what you've done. All right, so here we go. Twitch people, it's been a pleasure to serve you. Thank you for watching. No, no, this, the panel's not over. Oh, oh, are you no, playing we're, out we're, the Twitch I thing, though? You guys don't leave. If you're in the room, do not move. Twitch people, it's been a pleasure hanging out.